Wednesday morning, it's May 26th, 2021. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bites Last, which you can find at guymcpherson.com. Today's science update focuses on the Arctic Summit, the meeting comprised of the eight members of the so-called Arctic group that meets annually to have this summit. First, a little bit of context. Here's a headline from the New York Times dated May 20th, 2021, just as the Arctic Summit is about to begin. It's written by Christopher Flavel. Christopher interviewed me on August 7th, 2018, and that article appeared at Bloomberg Business Week on September 26th, 2018. So we can assume that he knows at least some of what I know about ongoing abrupt climate change leading to human extinction because he's a smart guy. We had a conversation about it uh, about three years ago. In the article in the New York Times, Flavel writes, the executive order signed Thursday is the latest indication of how climate change, once dismissed as a distant threat, is already complicating life for Americans. It follows a report last week from the Environmental Protection Agency which showed that global warming is now being felt in the United States in the form of more heat waves, wildfires, floods, and other disasters. He goes on to report that this could destabilize major sectors of the economy, prompting comparisons with the Great Recession of 2008 to 2009, as if the Great Recession has somehow ended, and as if it's only a recession. Here's the signature line. Quote, our modern financial system was built on the assumption that the climate was stable, end quote. Brian Deese, head of President Biden's National Economic Council, said Thursday on a report with reporters, quote, it's clear that we no longer live in such a world, end quote. Well, that's quite an admission from the administration of President Biden that we no longer live in the kind of world that supports this way of life. Point of reference, that paper I referred to in which I was interviewed by Christopher Flavel for Bloomberg Business Week back in September 2018 was titled, New Climate Debate, How to Adapt to the End of the World. How to adapt to the end of the world? If it's the only world you got, I don't think there's such a thing as adaptation. I'd love to be proven wrong. All right. Back to the Arctic Summit. This paper is from Voice of America, and it's titled, Top U.S.-Russian Diplomats Meet Face-to-Face -face at Arctic Summit. It was produced May 20th, 2021, and there are many others as well. Also, May 20th, this from CNBC, tensions will likely grow as Chinese, China seeks bigger role in the Arctic. China wants to join the Arctic summit to have annual input with the other eight nations that are part of the summit that meets annually. The key, among the key points, in this article, China's ambitions to take a more significant role in the Arctic are likely to lead to growing tensions, according to Oksana Antonenko, a director at risk consultancy from Control Risks. Beijing announced plans for a polar silk road in 2018 and previously referred to itself as a near-Arctic state, a proposition that ignited some controversy. China's ambitions to take a more significant role in the Arctic will likely to lead to growing tensions, according to risk consultancy from Control Risks. Well, duh. So China is trying to insert itself into the relatively small group of countries that comment on the Arctic and also in, is interested in trade routes across the Arctic. Interestingly, it was those trade routes, in that case, in the Pacific Ocean that drew the United States into World War II. From May 20th at the Hill, Vouten, sorry, Putin 
Putin vows, <laughs> otherwise known as Vutin Pows. <laughs> All right. Once again, then, from May 20th, 2021, at The Hill, Putin vows to knock out the teeth of any power that tries to take Russian territory. And <laughs> here's, here's the lead. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday vowed to, quote, knock out the teeth in quote, of any power that attempts to take a portion of his country's territory. And apparently his territory includes the Arctic Ocean. Because again, the potential for trade routes to be open as the Arctic ice goes away. And at the same time, we lose habitat for humans on Earth. Hmm, odd. Okay, from Bloomberg, May 21st, 2021, the headline reads, Arctic superpower jostling heats up as Russia takes on key role. And the key role is this. The presidency of the Arctic Council is being assumed by Russia for the next two years, taking over the role previously held by Norway, I believe. And... Here's a quote from Russia's foreign affairs minister, Sergei Lavrov. He declared ahead of the Arctic summit that the Arctic, quote, is our land and our waters. Ooh. Things are getting, getting interesting between the major superpowers on this planet. From the Eurasia Daily Monitor on May 24th, 2021, the headline reads, The Arctic Prelude to a Stabilization Summit. And here's the lead. The meeting between U.S. State Secretary Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Reykjavik, Iceland last week, May 19th, was not supposed to resolve any disagreements, but it did clarify them. Primarily, their extensive conversation was ostensibly focused on preparing the agenda for the summit proposed by President Joseph Biden, but not as yet confirmed by President Vladimir Putin. The summit is provisionally scheduled for mid-June, so coming soon, when Biden will travel to Europe for the G7 event and the meeting of North Atlantic NATO organization heads of state and government. So, again, indications that things are starting to fall apart in terms of the friendly relationships between Russia and the United States. Let me end with a little bit of context and the worst news you can possibly imagine. From fizz.org, May 21st, 2020. So, about the same time all these other papers were coming out, this comes out of fizz.org. Arctic, Arctic warming three times faster than the planet report warms. And it refers specifically to the Arctic Climate Change Update 2021, Key Trends and Impacts. And I've read only the summary for policymakers. It might be worth your time. Again, that came out on May 21st, 2021. And let's go back now 10 years to the Arctic summit, Arctic summit from just a decade ago. Here's the headline from NPR in their environment section from May 11th, 2011. Arctic summit to tackle melting glaciers. If you've been paying attention to this channel at all, you'll know that we aren't doing anything about those melting glaciers except speeding their melt. So if the Arctic summit is as successful this time around as it was 10 years ago, then we're going to melt all the glaciers. We're going to melt the Arctic ice. We're going to have war break out between the superpowers in the world. And that's what I expect, actually. I hate to be cynical about the whole thing, but all roads lead to ruin, it seems to me. Thanks for staying tuned for this exceptionally long science update this time around. We'll try to put together another one of these, probably shorter, in about a week.